not, you know, I'm not trying to make light of the inadequacies of the technology, but it is what it is. And, uh, you know, if we move our sense of connection and trust to a, uh, a deeper or a higher authority, um, it'll all work out in some way. Um, although it may take a little while for you to realize that it all worked out. <laughs> all right? Because we're not very accepting of that idea that things really are all right as they are. And that you're under the influence of a whole other um, uh, quality of enlivenment all the time. You're just not nearly as aware of that as you could be. And in order to become aware of it, you're going to have to do your due diligence. There's work to be done. You know, there's quieting down. There's learning how to sit with and be with all that stuff that's mm. so troubling. Wow. By the way, that does not make you special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because everybody is experiencing it. The facilitators, the students, teachers, innocent, what appear to be innocent bystanders, everybody is dealing with some aspect of that voice in their head that is, seems to be unrelenting and uh, unfriendly and uh, disquieting. Everyone's dealing with that. So you don't have any more or less of that than I do or anybody else. And together, there, what's offered us is a way to, to move beyond that, to move our consciousness beyond that. To learn how to be uncomfortable, or to be comfortable even when we seem to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Jeff, I just wanted to say, I think that's really powerful the way you just shared that, because it, the, I, what I heard is that often a pitfall for me is that I expect myself to be without it. Yeah. You know, or that I should diminish that, or turn the volume down on that. Yeah. And what the way you said that just now was like that I can be with it and still not yeah run by it. Yeah, e exactly. Because for for all intents and purposes, whatever seems to be going on in your experience should be is exactly what should be going on in your in your experience. There's something at work. That that's so being. It's okay. Pardon me. So it's okay to be. So it's okay to be with or without. Right? It it's all okay, <laughs> whatever you have or don't seem to have, mm -hmm. and whether it's similar to what I seem to have or don't have or not. You know, it's all okay. You're okay just the way you are. The way Jesus says it in the course is that you're not expected to be without illusions. You know, most, most of your distractedness comes from attempting to, to suppress them, to drive them out of mind. You can't do that. The more, the more you try to drive them out of mind, the stronger they become. Yeah, you make them real. Yeah, you've got to make a move like Obi-Wan Kenobi made, made in Star Wars, you know, when he was fighting Darth Vader and he just stopped fighting. That's the maneuver that works letting it be, right? Recovering that, that uh, deeper sense of I need do nothing. I'm whole and perfect as God created me. I'm minimally aware of it now, but if I'm willing, and I am, I'm, a te I'm testifying, I'm expressing, I'm asserting my willingness, I can become more aware of it. And I have nothing to lose by making that thought playing and expressing it to the power that, uh, that is present as if it was true even though I may not even believe that it was true or believe that it is true. There's more to my life and to, to the life experience than what I believe or don't believe and it's in my best interest to find out about that stuff as soon as possible. Sooner would be better than later. All right, so, you know, a, a facilitating and fostering that sense of nowness, readiness, 
right? You want to be ready. You want to be crystal clear how ready you are. And if you don't feel ready, you want to have a look at what all that business is, that chatter that's going on in your mind and body, so that you can express um, your sense of whether you want it to continue or whether you ra you're willing for it to be, you know, to recede into more of a background uh, ex a sense, sensory experience, rather than being the centerpiece of your frustration and your upset. Sort of like having an itch and you know what, you just have to scratch it, but the more you scratch it, the more it itches the more problematic it becomes. The better approach is, with all those things, is you learn to just leave it alone. You learn to leave things alone. You might have taken a few cycles of poison ivy or po poison oak or something for you to really get the idea there. And usually people do go through, you know, a lot of those kind of experiences where you discover if you if you just knuckle under and start scratching, <laughs> it's just gonna get worse and last longer. And that's true regarding all these aspects of this irritable system, the system of conditionality that largely is uh, in, uh, unacceptable to us. So you're not expected to be without any of that. You are, ex you are asked, called upon, it is requested of you that you um, not want to make a case for it, not want to argue about it or, or share it in a way that would solicit or elicit agreement. You've already had way too much agreement for your specialness. <laughs> and and it, it, it's problematic. Everybody goes through that process, you know. We learn to... We, we uh, covet the experience of being special and deepen our identification with it and then discover, you know, great difficulty in terms of freeing ourselves from it because we've labored so long and hard to make it real and true. So I think I uh, shared some this week about that, the idea of agreement. You know, we're all looking for agreement in our human experience. And even when we're not aware that we are, we are. We all want to fit in. We want to... Um, uh, we, we, we want to assimilate and we want to conform and, and that... Validation. <laughs> sure, and, it, and it's problematic because we're often adjusting to other aspects of the condition that's already problematic for us. It, that, it's not miraculous. Con, conformity is not miraculous. There's that really excellent quote that the opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. You know, it's, I'm so uncomfortable, I'll just go along with whatever it is that they're saying. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll try to, you know, grow, you know, glom on to that and see if that gives me some sense of relief and comfort. It never does, but as the ego guides and directs, it seems like a reasonable thing to do, fit in. So, so, I get it. I feel the same way you do. <laughs> I don't have anything in my human experience that's really much different than yours other than the form of it. The content of it is really all the same. Um, and uh, it, it's all part of okay. Even though there are uh, aspects of that influence that's more or less problematic. And um, uh, through uh, and under the, the proper guidance and supervision, 
of Holy Spirit, you become more able to uh, disassociate from those influences. They're still there. I'm not denying them. But I am affirming and asserting what they are in the context of who I am. That's Gus just chowing down. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so the, the key phrase, the key, the, the key idea here that's so really critical in any situation that we think ourselves to be in is take a breath and relax. You know, it's supposed to be the way it is. <laughs> and there's everything I can learn from it. And the learning is far beyond my understanding, but it'll be provided if I don't interfere with it and if I don't get in the way of that. Um, I'm looking at uh, a spot in the text now, which I think would be nice to introduce um, now. Um, and it's in chapter 5, if anybody wants to read along. It's chapter 5. Uh, chapter 5 is Healing and Wholeness. And this is subtitle 4, Teaching and Healing. Right, because the the whole experience about healing is really a function of of self expression. The more you express yourself as you really and truly are, the the better your experience is. The more enriched you become. The more you become yourself. The more you become yourself, the less irritation, the less upset, the less frustration. It actually does fade, recede into the background. It loses its um, uh, ability to possess your mind. Mm. Appeal. Yeah, it loses its appeal, you know. And you recognize it for what it is and learn to live, to think, to feel beyond it. Because it really doesn't have anything to do with you as God created you has nothing to do with you as you really and truly are. And everything about the moment is calling to that in you, requesting, you know, asking that all-important question, who are you? What am I? Who am I? Shouldn't have to read a, a three, a, you know, <laughs> shouldn't have to read a, the Bible to get to know that. Since, since it's encoded in your being, it's deeper than your DNA, it's all already there. Mm. Wow. But all those systems can really help you get to it in a more effective, in a more efficient, and in a more consistent way. All right, so teaching and, he and healing. What fear has hidden still is part of you. Fear doesn't change anything. And it only seems to conceal reality and truth from you to the extent that you don't want to see it. That you want to be misled. Because it's in plain sight, spiritual sight. It's in, the, it, it, it's in the only aspect of time that has any reality. It's always in this holy instant your own radiance, your own light, your own dignity, your own integrity, your own beauty, your own living truth. Jeffrey, what, what paragraph are you on? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, it's, it's part of a book that hasn't been written yet. It's being written as we speak. Oh. No, no. Oh. <laughs> um, actually, it's it's chapter five, healing and wholeness, and it's subtitle four, teaching and healing. And I've ju I just read the first sentence, the first sentence of it, and it just says, what fear has hidden still is part of you. It's still here. It's not really hidden. I see it. I know you. I see you. I know what you are and who you are. You mean everything to me. It's an observable thing, what you are. You're not concealed, you're not hidden. You, all those rough edges, and you don't really have them. Uh, 
And the second sentence says, joining the atonement is the way out of fear. What's the atonement? It's the at one minute. It's the holy here now. It's, it's this without the past. It's this without your story. It's right here, right now, without your specialness. It's what's really and truly here that your story and your specialness and your sense of irritation and your sense of frustration can't conceal or change or diminish in any way because you are only as God created you. You don't have to believe that. In fact, if you don't believe it, what I want you to do is don't believe it. But no, it's true. My belief in it is it required? Yeah, yeah b belief, <laughs> you know, it's up to you. Belief is up to you. It's, it'll distract you, but only to the extent that you want to be distracted. Because it's perfectly reasonable to not believe something and just know the truth of it. In fact, the better able and the more able you are to get that and to just know the truth, the less um, susceptible you are, the less vulnerable you are to, to, your, to those egocentric temptations. Mm -hmm. The more that stuff can just come online and you, you're just cruising above it. Mm -hmm. You're not denying it. You heard it. It just doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like that. You can become so strong in who you are and what you are that only the truth has meaning and influence because that's what you are asserting and affirming because you've cleaned and cleared that up for yourself. You've become single-minded, purposeful. Yeah, Steve. I know you love pilot analogies, Jeff, and I'm having the, the sense of a pilot's flying the airplane and there's go, he's, gonna, he's going through a little turbulence. He doesn't get freaked out by it. Right, and passengers may. Yeah, and that the job of the pilot is to not get freaked out by the turbulence. Even if he gets, or she gets freaked out. Yeah. Which even, can happen. Yeah, that would be the turbulence. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think that's really awesome to acknowledge it. There it is, it's gonna be rocky for a little bit. We're gonna get through it. Uh, I'm not expecting this flight. I'd be surprised if the flight didn't have turbulence, although if we have a flight without turbulence, that'd be great too. But uh, I, I love yeah, this. Yeah, it could happen. Yeah. It could happen. We're in the condition where anything can seem to happen. Yeah. Not only can it seem to happen, it seems to be happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but you can ride above and beyond all of those perceptions because fundamentally, what you are and who you are is beyond perception. Who you are and what you are is not even capable of perception because it's not a quality that God created and therefore it doesn't really exist. Your dream is a dream. Mm. The only key component of your dream is you and the reality you share with every living aspect of your dream. That's what's important and essential. And that's abstract. There isn't really anything in particular to know about that other than its value and importance, which transcends the limiting functions of the ego. And that's what I meant, that you're capable of um, being aware of all that separate self-personality stuff while knowing who you are and what you are and showing up for that experience, being grateful of your own presence. Huh? How about that for an idea? Being grateful that you are here, that you are alive, and that all, in all of God's creation there's nothing like you. And you have an opportunity to find that out, to come to know that in ways that are unimaginable and deeply nourishing. So what fear is hidden still is part of you. Fear has changed nothing. Joining the atonement, the at one man, is the way out of fear. That's being present, being awake. Being awake in my dream. 
I, I seem to be dreaming a dream of separation, but now I am awake. I'm present. I see what seems to be happening. I acknowledge it as only apparent what's, what appears. Remember, nothing I see in this room on that wall from these windows in this apartment, in this box, has any meaning. It doesn't mean anything, right? I think that's one of the first workbook lessons. So, and, and that, that kind of thinking represents your determined readiness and willingness to cooperate. Remember, miracles depend on cooperation. You're asked to cooperate. All right, and the Holy Spirit, moving on here, uh, third sentence, we're actually getting to the third <laughs> sentence. The Holy Spirit will help you reinterpret everything that you perceive as fearful, everything that you perceive as fearful, problematic, irritating, and teach you that only what is loving is true. See, essentially, you're wholly loving and wholly lovable. There isn't really anything else to learn. All that stuff that's been so burdensome and troublesome that you've been trying to fix or change doesn't really exist. All you've managed to do is to sustain your perception of it. Your delusion that it still has to be dealt with. So whatever that is, the Holy Spirit will help you reinterpret all of that. He'll put a frame of light around that. There's already a frame of light around that so that you can see into your fears in an empowered way so that you can see beyond them. Oh, this is great. Because there really isn't anything to see in your story mm. since none of it ever really happened. So the other thing about all this is just so amazing is that I'm not asked to do this on my own or alone. I have In help. fact, it would be impossible. <laughs> right. The idea of being alone is the problem to begin with. Yeah. It's separate. And, and all I really need to know about what I call alone or separateness is that it, it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. You've never been alone, mm. nor will you ever be alone. Mm. You've never been... Um, uh, without loving consideration present and administering to you, nourishing you, keeping you up and out of the messiness of those contradictions and conflict. By the grace of God, you live. It's a habit of expectation too, though, wouldn't you say? It's a habit of expectation nowadays I expect help. Well, it's a, it's a. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But for you know, most of my life, I never expected any help. I mean, yeah. Because in fact, I expected no help from anybody, including myself. But yeah. eventually, you learn to expect. Well, this will be somehow. This will be shown to me. I'll, I'll find a way to. It'll the path will show up somehow, and yeah. you expect it. Uh, yes, you train your mind to recognize its presence. And, and, and there's a beautiful uh, creative expectation about that. Yeah, you look for it because you have the eyes to look for it now. Yes. Yeah. You're, if you're looking for it, if you're the Son of God, you're going to find what you're, look, what you're looking for. Yeah, you're going to find it and you've come to that because you looked everywhere else and realized it was nothing to find. <laughs> yeah. Ult ultimately, there. everyone returns to holy instant because in all aspects of the time-space experience, you know, you, you can, you've explored that to great detail and distraction, and it just hasn't worked out well for you. You, you've, you, you naturally then gravitate and return to the peace of God, because in reality, you never had anything other than that to return to. 
that was always the primary influence feature of your core being, of your truth, your inner truth. You were always as God created you. So, so Jeffrey, yeah. When we find ourselves in a situation that um, is stimulating fear in us, and we recognize that, and we are able to move beyond, and I'm going to use the term perception, perception of fear to see the truth behind it and the lovingness in, in the sense that there is, I don't, I don't really know how to put this in words. It, so I'm going to say it in a different kind of way. Do, do we sometimes attract to ourselves situations for the opportunity to recognize the fear and then move beyond that fear and see the love that's behind it and can tragedy or, or painful situations then become a gift for us to discover the reflection of God? <laughs> Absolutely. Because God is who He is, because love is the creative component, reality, intelligence, because his spirit is at work in all dimensions of time and space, everything in it inevitably becomes a part of your good. It becomes a part of what brought you home. And its manifestation occurred in the way it did because apparently that was the best way uh, the most suitable way for you to come into conscious awareness of it so that it ceased to be condemning and problematic. Okay, a, a, a way of bringing it to us so that we can see what needs to be healed in ourselves. Yeah, and everything, whatever you have going on is, go, is part of plan. It's part of reality. It feels like it's getting warmer in here. Hold, hold on one second, Franklin. I'm okay. Yeah, so it's all part of the prevailing good, all of it, even though much of it, you know, you're not likely to perceive in that way. You know, most of us don't like anything any of the time. There's always something wrong, given the parameters of your egotistical orientation. Even the stuff you think you like, you don't really like. And that usually becomes apparent after you get a little more familiar with it, yes? The more familiar you become with something, what usually happens? The less enjoyment. Well, there's the saying, familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> yeah. Just need to go on vacation. Yeah, and then <laughs> Kevin, is, Kevin is saying, of course, a solution for that is a vacation. You know, until the... For about a week. For about a, the second or third day, depending on your system <laughs> and, and your own evolution, that vacation becomes a problem. <laughs> So something is not quite right about something in here, the room, the sheets. Oh my God, I chose to spend my vacation with this person. <laughs> so, you know, the whole thing is skewed, except the truth of it, the truth in you. Because truth is beyond your ability to destroy. It's beyond your ability to destroy, but entirely within your ability to accept. See, at any given moment, you can come to truth. You can lay down your defenses against the truth. You, at any given moment, you can acknowledge the truth as your reality. You can lay claim to what God wills for you because it's the only component of your experience that has validity. 
and it's always been true, and whatever way that seems to uh, evade your consciousness is only because you're not so interested in cherishing it. Ultimately, you know, correction, atonement, is really ridding yourself of your own will to not know your own loving worth. It's giving up your sad and sorry biased version of your life. It's giving it up. Doesn't mean not, uh, not having lingering memories of it, thoughts about it, emo emotions about it, but it's not being governed by them because you've had, you, you're done. You've seen it for what it is. You heard that joke and you know what? It isn't so funny. I just don't laugh at it anymore. So truth, this quality, this essence, this thing that everybody wants, which is all you can ever really have, is beyond your ability to alter, to destroy. But entirely, entirely within your ability to accept. Entirely. It belongs to you because as, a, as an extension of God, it belongs to you as an extension of God because as an extension of God you created it with Him. It is yours because it is part of you just as you are part of God because He created you. Nothing that is good can be lost. Nothing that is good, Not, another way of saying that is nothing that is of God can be lost. Whatever God's promise is, you have it in its entirety. In its nothing nothing real can be threatened. Nothing real can be threatened, right? All the stuff that seems to be so vulnerable and subject to loss and damage uh -huh. has has no reality and never had any reality. Oh, wow. That's the aspect of your story that never happened. Even though you're not asked to deny it in whatever form it may appear to you in your psychology, in your emotionality, in your thought system. You are called upon though to recognize it as an aspect of your illusion, not the truth. So nothing that is good can be lost because it comes, uh, oh, well, let me, yeah. Nothing that is good can be lost because it comes from the Holy Spirit, the voice for creation. Holy Spirit is God's voice. Nothing that is not good was ever created. And because it was not created, it has no actual existence. Stay present. I know everybody wants to go away. <laughs> have a vacation in, in the middle of a perfectly good thing. <laughs> oh, I just can't get out of here fast enough. <laughs> so nothing that is good can be lost because it comes from the Holy Spirit, the voice for creation. Nothing that is not good was ever created and therefore cannot be protected. All your efforts to protect and defend all that stuff just sustains the illusion of it. it does nothing it's lost energy if energy could be lost that would do it that would make you weary it's fatiguing to effort to use your mind and your life energy in an uncreative way in an unreal way mm -hmm. that's what all that I need to sleep and I'm tired of that I'm that I'm feeling right now is all about. <laughs> Nothing that is not good was ever created and therefore cannot be protected. Amen. <laughs> cannot be protected and has there's no need to protect it. No good can come of it. And if there is, the Holy Spirit will use it far beyond your ability to use it. 
the atonement, the at one meant, the holy here now, the, the loving presence is the guarantee of the safety of the kingdom. Everything is safe in God. Everything. You are safe in God, no matter what you think. Your, your thoughts may distract you, but they do not change God's mind. And therefore, you can learn to think like him and experience yourself beyond all of that stuff. Oh, Jeff, I yeah. just want that there's this popular idea that's called F O M O. F O M O? Yeah, fear of missing out. Yeah. And I often am faced with that when I have to decide between two alternatives. Oh, if I do this thing, I'll lose that thing. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll never have the opportunity to do that thing again because I chose the other thing. And out of this lesson, it's like, no, nothing real can be threatened. I can't miss out. Well, and another way of saying that in keeping and in the context of your reference is you can't real, nothing can ever really be lacking. If I go here or there is not the issue because what God wants me to have, I have. Hmm. Yeah. And whatever that is and its influence on me will provide in any situation or circumstance that I seem to find myself in. So A is really never in conflict with B. It's all good. It's all part of the prevailing goodness. It's only a condition, it's a false condition that you're establishing in your own mind. Right. Only to distract yourself from your own goodness. It also makes you, it also makes you uh, choose very poor decisions. Yeah, it, it gives... I mean, this isn't like an investing, this is coming from like an investing idea maybe? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's, if, you're, if you're chasing after something that's going up, inevitably you get you get you lo you lose. I mean, yeah, financially because that energy is just bad decision making. I mean, it's just not. Yeah, once you begin to think conditionally, all hell breaks loose. You're yeah. lost, and it's just going to be one thing after another, and it's going to be this cavalcade of messiness and discomfort and yeah. oh, woe is me, woe is me, you wow. know. You're going to become an enemy to yourself and an enemy to, to life. You're going to lose just how sweet it is to be you, to know yourself, to feel so deeply into your own soulfulness and not in present awareness and knowledge of the validity of it. That feeling is already a loss. It's already me convincing myself I'm losing because I feel like I have to hold on to that. Yeah. So I'm already giving the energy yeah. to the universe that I, I'm a loser. I need to I need to try hard to get this instead of yeah. it'll, it'll come. Yeah. Everything everything or about I'll just, I'll just choose that. It's fine. Whatever happens is fine. It's good. Yeah, be, because that's the one and only thing you can't lose. Everything else you will lose. And you already did. <laughs> <laughs> Except the one fundamental feature of your creative reality, your eternal being, the truth of what you are and who you are, that is unalterable, it's irrevocable, can't be changed. And that's, what else do you need to know? Ever, in any situation, out of which you can go direct to your sense of peace and calm and, and greater capacity, ability. Recovering that energy aspect of the peace of God. Just knowing I'm okay. It, I certainly don't believe it and it doesn't look that way, mm -hmm. but I know it's so. Mm. I know it so. Mm. The at one minute, that's what the holy instant is offering you. That's what Holy Spirit is offering you. Holy instant is providing. That's the context, the foundation of the here and now. 
should you elect to be present, which I recommend <laughs> and encourage. This at one minute atonement is the guarantee of the safety of the kingdom of the kingdom, and the union of the sonship is its protection. You don't have to worry about anything or anyone in the context of that living reality in which all things are safe forever now and so always. That's all I need to know to recover my sensibilities, my deeper, my deeper capacity to listen, to hear, to respond, to feel into that, that one I call you, the other. And so fall into a deeper experience of loving connection with myself, with the greater totality of the, whatever this phenomenal oneness is, being alive is. The truth of your being alive. So the atonement is the guarantee of that safety, the safety of the kingdom, and the union of the sonship is its protection. It's cool. Doesn't matter what I think. Doesn't therefore it doesn't matter what you think. Mm. Jesus had a mind as well. He was well aware of his uncreative thinking. He just learned how to leave it alone. Mm. Don't scratch it. <laughs> and when you find yourself scratching it, recover as soon as possible. Change your mind. Come awake. Yeah, Bridget. Yeah. So it's interesting because. Um, I had a, I had a moment of peace when you were saying that like nothing, n our safety is, I forgot how you said it, but just basically there's nothing to fear basically. Yeah, we're okay. If I paraphrase. And I had this moment of, ah, yes. And then I had um, probably like a minute of peace and then my mind gave me a very terrifying thought. Yeah. Right? Well, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly I was, like you said, gone from the room <laughs> and in my head. Um, but what I, I did was I caught that and I started to really, like, every time my brain wanted to talk about the scary thought I had, I listened even more deeply to what you were saying. Like, I kept focusing on every word you were saying to come back to the present. Like, I didn't want it to hijack me from this moment of truth. And so giving. it didn't. Right. Yeah. So you used your mind, you, essentially you used your ability to deny mm -hmm. in a way, in a helpful way, in a creative way, in a healing way. And Jesus talks about that as using denial to deny the denial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, using all of those attributes of mind that seem to, ha that seem to be problematic, using them as an asset, as a resource as a means to return. All that stuff under the influence of loving presence becomes helpful. All those references bring you here. They return you to here and now because you never really left. And you were never really afraid and no matter how many people you convinced of it, you know, still, you didn't convince God. <laughs> Nothing changed. There still was never any fear because God never created fear. And so, and, so, and so the ego cannot prevail against the kingdom when you use your mind as it's designed to be used, as it was created to be used, as a... a, a uh, uh, as an aspect of reality. As you use your, your life energy to speak life, to represent living ideas, what happens? You live. <laughs> you live. You, you come back to life. You realize, oh, this feels pretty good. <laughs> you, you come back to life. You're alive again. And it, and it didn't even look like anything happened or took any effort because it doesn't. Reality is already reality. Goodness is already goodness. You're already the apple of God's eye. He already loves you and cares for you deeply. You're already his beloved, his one and his only. 
So the ego cannot prevail against the kingdom because the sonship is united because you are in uh, are an intrinsic aspect, inherent intrinsic aspect of the oneness. Without you, there'd be no creation. Without you, there'd be no oneness. Can you get that? You are the key component. You're the, you're the living expression of all of that. And it is life itself that's calling upon you to, you know, can you, are you all right with that idea of being alive? <laughs> you know, are you okay with that experience of being? as God created you? And would you then, and therefore, be willing to take a step or two on behalf of that living energy, to speak on behalf of it, to be a witness for it, to do the deed? You know, everyone is called. Not to complain, not to, st you know, uh, get caught up in drama, but to learn how to use their mind to bypass all the drama and the confusion and the misunderstanding. To be present and functional. To listen and feel deeply so you can be an expression, a voice, a voice of reason in the apparent bleakness of human unconsciousness. Mm. That's what you're here for, is what it means to be the light of the world. In every situation and circumstance, you have something to contribute. And it's only through your contributing it, your unconscious, and then perhaps conscious contributing of it, do you then become conscious, cognizant of what it is? Do you then become more of that? more alive within its expression, more grateful for being that and only that. See, the ego cannot prevail against any of that. Uh, any of that little willingness on your part that renders you cooperative. So the miracle can be offered you. And that you might take another step and give voice to it in some way, so that some of that inherent fundamental goodness can manifest itself for just a nanosecond. And for a second, you can be without fear and doubt about what you are and who you are. And deepen your own appetite and sense of everything that you always knew to be your reality. This is not new to you. So the ego cannot prevail against any of that um, stuff you think you have or think yourself to be because you are united because you're not alone because you're one with everyone because you're being summoned you're being called that call is in you that call is love loving grace and dignity and worthiness far beyond anything you could imagine it's calling to you from itself on your behalf now hear this. In the presence of those who hear the Holy Spirit's call to be as one, which you are, sorry, you have no other options. In the presence of those who hear the Holy Spirit's call to be as one, the ego fades away and is undone. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Are you okay that what never was be undone for you now? So it doesn't irritate you or distract you. Remember, what the ego makes, it keeps to itself, and so it is without strength. Because the only true power there is, is in that is in the wholeness. In, in, uh, in the whole. In the totality in the living presence of the oneness that created, that creates oneness like itself. That's what strength and power is. There's, there's no strength and power in that Darth Vader stuff, fighting and 
dominating and winning and, you know, trying to divide things all up and being conflict with any part of it. That's all weakness, hiding. Have you been watching the Joseph Campbell myth thing on Netflix? No. Oh, it's on Netflix, the Joseph Campbell Yeah, myth. I've seen it in the past. In fact, I... I yeah, I just watched it the other day. So yeah. He, he talks about the, the Jedis and yeah. what it's about. It's very, it's really nice. Yeah, all of I these stories, stories yeah. you know, all have something to contribute to our, our evolution, our deeper understanding. Yeah the understanding that surpasses the world that frees us from our delusion, our conflict, all that stuff that never really was. So what the ego makes, it keeps to itself, and so it, and by the way, if anybody, uh, Kevin is saying that, that uh, if you haven't, if you didn't hear him, the Joseph Campbell PBS special, The Power of Myth, is that the what it is? The Power of Myth, yeah, it's, yeah. On, it's on Netflix. It's, it's on Netflix, it's available now. If you never saw it, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's There's really a lot good. of wonder, he's a wonderful orator, and uh, uh, he really speaks about this is really... It under, is it under documentary? What's it under? What's it under on Netflix? Just, uh, if you go to Netflix, you could do a search for just Joseph Campbell, and I'm sure it'll come up. It's called the power of myth. Yeah. The pa yeah, the power of myth. Um, be because the whole is in each part. Because even in your story, is at its core loving understanding. So it all has a part to play for as long as you re retain the memory of, of it which is all temporary, but for as long as you retain that memory, it has a role to play in your enlivenment, in your healing, in your coming awake. It has something to contribute. Everything has something to contribute, even Donald Trump. <laughs> what the ego makes, so, what the ego makes, it keeps to itself and so it is without strength. It's, it has no strength because it's unshared. It's, it's the idea of aloneness, separateness. That the idea of union is impossible. But in reality, it's only union that is possible because it's only unity, the unity of the sonship that has any reality. Regarding the ego, it does not die because it was merely never born, it wasn't created, it has no real existence. It's just a thought I'm thinking. Physical birth is not a beginning, it is a continuing. Mm. Everything that continues has already been born. <coughs> It will increase as you are willing to return the unhealed part of your mind to the higher part, returning it undivided to creation, returning it undivided to creation. I have come to give you the foundation so your own thoughts can make you really free. You have carried the burden of unshared ideas that are too weak to increase, but having made them, you did not realize how to undo them. You cannot cancel out your past errors alone. That's done in the context of relationship, true relationship, trust, power, strength. Wherever two are joined, Loving presence is here. Christ is here. Strength and power. God is here. So he says, I've come to give you the foundation. Me too. And by the way, you too. <laughs> You're here to give the foundation, to express the foundation, to allow that God-created foundation to express itself through your vehicle, through your voice through your beautiful and unique mind, life, and living experience. 
So your own thoughts can make you really free because under the influence of this living unlimited truth, there's only freedom, goodness, creativity. It was beautiful, wasn't it? Huh. For the nanosecond that it lasted, it served. I got everything I needed to get from it. You have carried the burden of unshared ideas that are too weak to increase, but having them, uh, having made them, you did not realize how to undo them. You cannot cancel out your past errors alone. They will not disappear from your mind without the atonement, the atonement, the unity of the sonship, Christ's living presence. They will not disappear from your mind without the atonement, without atonement. A remedy, why? A remedy not of your making. Anything you can think of separately isn't going to float your boat. <laughs> the atonement, the atonement, the holy here now, the loving presence, the Christ here now, must be understood as a pure act of sharing. That's all it is. You want to have that? Share it. Be everything for everyone. Be the love that seems to be lacking. Be the peace that doesn't seem to be visible. Be the solution beyond the apparent conflict. All the great teachers throughout human history have all spoken of that. Yeah, so the atonement must be understood as a pure act of sharing. That is what I meant when I said it is possible, even in this world, to listen to one voice, even when you're at work, even when you're with that person that just, pushes the buttons. <laughs> It is possible, even in this world, in that condition, in that situation, to listen to one voice. If you are part of God and this sonship, and the sonship is one, you cannot be limited to the self the ego sees. And you're not. I'm here, you know, to encourage, emphasize the facts of your life and your living to be clear, honest, and direct with you so that you can wake up and leave all that hellishness behind, <laughs> which just makes you more fun to know and be around. You know, then you actually start to loosen up and you can laugh a little bit and, you know, it, 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 it's good, it gets good. That was good, this is good. <laughs> If you are part of God and the sonship is one, you cannot be limited to the self the ego sees. All right? That's, <laughs> you know, you know that. Every loving thought held in any part of the sonship, what time is it now? 8.11. Good. We're doing good. Every loving thought held in any part of the sonship belongs to every part. All that stuff he or she did or said that seemed to be, that you remember, that you are impressed by, influenced by, and may perhaps even inspired by, it belongs to you. It's part of your nature, your being. It's part of what God gave you and you have. Through your sharing of it, you come, you bring it into closer and closer proximity. You know, Another way of saying that is the light has come. Mm, that's my lesson too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Nice. So every loving thought held in any part of the sonship, wherever it seemed to be, whoever seemed to do it or say it, belongs to you, to every part of the sonship. It is shared because it is loving. Loving is the expression of that unified reality. Sharing is God's way of creating. 
it's also your way of creating. The ego can keep you in exile from the kingdom, but in the kingdom itself it has no power. Ideas of the spirit do not leave the mind that thinks them, nor can they conflict with each other. That's why there's no conflict. However, ideas of the ego can conflict because they occur at different levels and also include opposite thoughts at the same level. It's very confusing. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> It is impossible to share opposing thoughts. You can share only the thoughts that are of God and that he keeps for you. That's why when you do share loving thoughts, you feel closer to everyone and everything on up to and including your creator. God begins to make sense to you, the idea of his loving presence, as you share him. The essence of what he is, which is your own energy, your own true love. Your life is your own true love. Your life, just the way it is. So, oh, this is so beautiful. You can share only the thoughts that are of God that, and that he keeps for you. And of such is the kingdom of heaven. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's, exper it, it's beyond experience, but it's at least experiential from your human sensibilities. It's an experience completely beyond anything you're capable of imagining, which makes it far more compelling, which is why you can't quite lose it no matter how much you've efforted to lose it or deny it or suppress it, mm -hmm. in fa by favoring thoughts that are meaningless and that are not worthy of you because they're not true. Mm -hmm. So you can share only the thoughts that are of God and that he keeps for you know, and of such is the kingdom of heaven. The rest remains with you until the Holy Spirit has reinterpreted them in the light of the kingdom, making them too worthy of being shared, which is why you're encouraged to share everything with Holy Spirit, because he will purify them. He'll make them usable for you. And the Bible says, and he shall purify, make it good again, because there's goodness in it. You just lost sight of it, perhaps, got a little distracted. Yeah. Can I just share? That's yeah. actually something that I've been practicing, and it's been really incredible, is that when I have, like I was talking about having a scary thought, I didn't realize how much I keep those scary thoughts. You know, there, there's something the Course says, I have no thoughts. I ha it's not that you won't have the thought, it's just none that I will keep. Yeah, yeah. So You're not expected to be without the thought. You are asked to not keep, keep them. them. Not, and not keep them to yourself, not Yeah, so in the sharing... What I've been just doing is literally when I have the scary thought, normally I would just keep obsessing about the thought and it would grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And what I've been doing is literally interrupting it. And you gave me that like term, interrupt the thought, and just saying like, Holy Spirit, Jesus, whoever you want to yeah. look at this with me. Like, yeah. And just what it was saying right there about like giving it so that yeah, God yeah, can, yeah. can heal it. Absolutely, yeah, so it can be made functional again, useful, yeah. so yeah. it can be clean and, and a clear reference. So it's like a practical way Very practical. for me to interrupt that spir fear spiral Yes. and like use it in a way that God can come in and help me. Right now. Right in this moment. Yeah, yeah. so help me God right now. <laughs> Just not believing the thought is like... You're welcoming God into the situation because you're not alone anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as soon as you say, "Well, I don't, this thought is," well, there's got to be something higher than that thought that's seeing that. Right? So. Yeah, and when you declare it, it becomes so for you. Power of your mind. Your mind has power. You can't lose that inherent power. You can seem to misuse it, but only temporarily and with no consequences.
are lasting effects. Uh, did someone uh, on the uh, call, call want to share? Your volume is uh, non-existent. I can barely hear you. Oh, now you're complaining about it. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, if there's a way to... Uh, if, Speak directly into yeah. the Hey, close to your phone. Better, better, better. Is better. better? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, in, you know, in connecting with all of that, something came to me recently. Well, Jesus, God came to me, and it was about <laughs> choice. I have a choice all the time, but it has to be, in, you know, where we are now, where we can actually experience the fact that we do have a choice to continue this kind of reverie in the head or turn it over, you know? Yeah, you I have a choice. You know, Whatever's appearing in your mind is appearing in your mind because he chose it to appear. And you can choose again. You're not stuck with it. And as Bridget... Yeah, I like the idea of choice. And I have choice. Great. Use it then. You know, use it to the best of your ability and, you know, because it's a resource. For as long as choice seems to exist, it's a resource. And I feel like that gift, it's a gift because I'm not struggling with it and I'm not trying enough to do this or trying not to do that or, Great. you know, that, that undividedness, the return to God undivided is sort of part of that to me. It means that, you know, the choice is there as a whole being, a whole spirit. Got it. Okay, so um, I'm going to just wrap up this paragraph. Where Holy Spirit says, when they have been sufficiently purified, your thinking, your ideas, your references, when they have been sufficiently purified, he lets you give them away. In fact, he encourages you to do so. The decision to share them is their purification. You know, so there's always this immediate healing aspect that's available to you if you want to use any aspect of your human or egoic experience for good. That'll, that'll clean it up right then and there. You, you know, you don't have to have an interim step. You, you could be anywhere and share whatever it is that seems to be troubling you in a way that expands the dynamic of true relationship, that brings you closer and more directly uh, connected to the one you're with. And by the way, uh, as I've often shared, I wholeheartedly, you know, all throughout the course, it's, it, he, Jesus talks about share, the need to share this stuff, teach this stuff, teach to have, share it, to learn it, to gain a greater uh, sense of it. Um, and each of you, in my experience, wherever you may think yourself to be in all of this, can significantly up the ante all throughout your life by sharing these ideas. It doesn't have to be in a formal context like an ACIM group, although it could be. And I recommend that as well. There's no one that could express this experience quite like you. Wow. And you will only gain from it, you'll deepen your own learning experience, you'll exp it'll expand dramatically and accelerate far beyond anything you thought possible just by deciding to do it. You will go through a lot and you'll, you'll think you're failing or you're not doing a very good job or these people are, you know, Ungracious, <laughs> or yeah, you'll go through whatever you go through, but it won't matter because your willingness to do it will set in motion 
and the energetic experience of enlivenment that will nourish you and fulfill you in unimaginable ways. And so, others. And, and, others. and others. And others far beyond the range of who seems to be showing up or not. Alexa, open the living room shade. Alexa, open the kitchen shade. Okay, here's a question from automation. Opening the shade in the kitchen. All right, so it's 8.23. You know, I, uh, I could read a little bit more. We could have some sharing now. Uh, it feels pretty good to me R right now. Everybody seems to be more or less on board. Not that I would online. No. <laughs> yeah, present and connected and feeling okay. It doesn't, you know, it, there seems to be some sense of uh, being here, <laughs> being here now. That's a good thing. If we've achieved that, we've achieved, you know, the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> yeah. which was never in question. And in reality, it was never unachieved, but. Does anyone have anything that they want to share or any questions about any of this? And See, the, w one of the key things here is y you can share the experience of God-loving presence without ever mentioning the word God or love. Mm -hmm. just, just because you decide mm -hmm. to do it. <laughs> you know, as Hanora said, you choose to do it. Yeah, it's funny. I, I um, have a friend who's like who I feel would really benefit from A Course in Miracles, but she's frightened of it. Like um, she feels that it's blasphemous, you know. Yeah, blasphemy. Um, but what's it interesting is, is beautiful. <laughs> it's beautifully blasphemous. <laughs> well, I've known her for about a year now, and just little by little, I just share principles of the Course in Miracles, but I don't use it, I don't quote like this is the Course in Miracles and I'm saying it now. I just quote it in a way that she's like, oh, that's beautiful, I love that. And so she's getting the Course, yeah. whether she knows it or not. Yeah, be so because incredible. the Course is embedded in your true feeling for her, yeah. your compassion for her, your empathy for her, your, your love for her. In your natural enthusiasm is the entirety of the Course. And you're being happy and smiling a little is the whole course. It's the whole energy of the course. <laughs> so, you know, you can quote Jesus literally and never give him any credit. He doesn't care. <laughs> He's you. Mm. You know, and he wants you to know him as yourself. Mm. Elsa. Well, I just, I've been thinking a lot about this tonight. Um, you want me to hold that? Sure. Um, just about, um, in, in the reading, um, just the idea of when you're sh sharing, to sh in order to share, you give everything away. And this course has been so healing for me around my artwork and sharing it. And cool. just, great. Yeah, and just being willing to be vulnerable with it and not hide it. But one of my... Oh, fears that comes and goes is about people copying it, <laughs> which is embarrassing to say, but it's yeah. it's what goes on with me. So sure. just yeah. being willing to say, oh, yeah, but well, people may, and that's fine. Like it's go ahead and take it. And, um, and then that you brought up upping the ante about sharing the course. I opened another Instagram account today of, to post my, Course of Miracles drawings. Beautiful. <laughs> Which oh, was wow. interesting that you, you said that. That were because I just remembered I haven't really been doing them for about a year, but I remembered they helped me connect so deeply to the words that I was reading, like internalize them in a different way. So I just thought this Absolutely. would be another way to build on that. Absolutely. There's a whole community of people out there that have that kind of system that y you um, nourished through your artwork as you were nourished. There's a whole, uh, you know what I mean? So let them do the talking, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 
You know, let your artwork, your artistic inspirations regarding this idea of loving presence, let it, you know. Shine. Yeah, let it shine, exactly. Yeah. That's beautiful. In terms of uh, joining, we usually think of joining being with somebody. Is Sonora, how about Sonora, Sonora? again, your volume is, is uh, very, very low. Are you using a headset, by the way? How, how, how does, I'm just curious because sometimes you sound very present and other times very far away. It seems like if you turn it. No, no, no. It's not this. No. Very low level. Does she have it on the speaker on? Yeah. Even lower. Speaking, speaking on the call from, from the telephone side, they're always louder than the room. And right now, Lenora, you sound like you're way, way off. Way, way, way what? Back. Far. Far away. Far away, okay. All right, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. And, and perhaps that's something we can all give some thought to and see if maybe you uh, can also... I, I don't want to chase the technology solution, but on the other hand, see if you can find the best possible resource for you to, you know, be able to, I don't know, secure or share an uh, a higher level of technological connection. You know, which may sound, which may take, may take the form of using a headset. Steve is saying that may take the form of using a headset. That might. It's often helpful. What's I that? Actually, it's I often use, helpful. Ear, I, I use earbuds, and they work perfectly fine. Yeah, and yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah, generally you sound pretty, pretty good, uh, Franklin, in terms of your level. So. Could we still? Try and hear what Honora was going to say. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Honora. If, you know, if you. Can you, can you hear? Can you hear me? It's very low. We can hear you, but it's very low. No change. Are you using? Are you using? For a second, for a second, it was better, but then it seems to drift away. Better. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I don't know if, <laughs> if it gets across the room, but. Okay, well, all I want to tell you is that I had a fantastic dream about, about Prince, you know, Prince, the singer. Fantas she had a fantastic dream about Prince, the singer, the artist. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Good nice. good for Prince and good for you. <laughs> and good for us. Why not? You know. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. needs to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Our only need is to be here now, you know? Yes. Hmm. Thank you for letting me share. Sure. <clears throat> Anybody else for uh, wrapping things up and completing uh, for tonight? Great. I'm good. Well, once again, um, and, and, all, and let, for, for a parting thought, just know that whatever comes up is what should come up. Mm -hmm. In whatever way it comes up. Mm -hmm. So it's all good, you know. None of us are really going to get scared for long, no matter <laughs> what I say or you say. So, um, you, know, you know, let it blur. Just trust 
in the underlying truth of the connection and the validity of what we've come for and lean into whatever that is and know that in the context of that whatever however the these evenings unfold it'll be good for each of us we'll all learn what we need to get from it and be the better for it so nothing to fear and nothing to be concerned or worried about uh, in those moments where it might feel a little awkward or a little like oh boy what do i say to that <laughs> so don't worry in other words don't worry about a thing and you know whatever uh, true enriching utility there is to this it's because of you it's because you're involved and you're on this and you are cooperative and cooperating and uh, that delights me and you know encourages me to no end so you know so I say I, I, I applaud you and say thank you to you as well as everyone here in the room um, and uh, I had a great evening, and, and I thank you for it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.